Hello, everyone, and welcome to our TED Talk about the chemistry of coral reefs. So when talking about coral reefs, most people will immediately think of like really bright colors in Australia or like finding Nemo or something. However, um, there's a lot more to coral reefs than what initially comes to many of our minds. So firstly, coral is a solid because it has a definite shape and its particles are tightly packed together so they're not able to move about. And macroscopically, corals come in a wide variety of shapes. Um, as we can see here, there these are just a couple of the common shapes that are formed um, in varying environments. So um, coral are really important for recycling carbon, nitrogen, and other nutrients, as well as protecting our coastlines and providing habitat and shelter for ocean organisms. And although coral looks like a plant, it's actually made up of animals called polyps. So as you can see, that image is of the polyps, and they are invertebrates with a soft body and a mouth of stinging tentacles called nematosis. So these polyps secrete a skeleton um, made up of aragonite, which is one of the forms of calcium carbonate, naturally occurring forms of calcium carbonate, or as you can see, CaCO3. So calcium carbonate is a chemical compound with a tetrahedral molecular geometry. It appears as a white odorless powder and is practically insoluble in water. So calcium carbonate is also found in chalk, limestone, and many other marine organisms. And these calcium carbonate skeletons will connect with each other and begin to act as a single organism. And this is how reefs are formed. So the colonies begin to connect with the other colonies and form reefs. However, this takes a really long time and the fastest a coral can expand is 15 centimeters per year. So it's a very slow process. And corals are translucent and they get their colors from algae called zooxanthellae that live in their tissue. And zooxanthellae are single-celled algae, as I said, and they will um, take in the carbon dioxide and release oxygen and pass some of the food they make from photosynthesis to the coral in exchange for the coral housing the algae. So they have a symbiotic relationship. And when the coral is stressed, um, this can be because of pollution or other factors, they evict their algae and you can see their you know, translucent color, and this is coral bleaching. Um, and then they, this means that they can no longer get their energy from photosynthesis. On my section, I'll be talking about how the oceans have become more acidic and the problems that causes. Coral reefs may be deep under the ocean surface, but are seeing the harsh impacts from our lives above the water. Above the water, we use fossil fuels and burn them as a use of energy, and that can be seen in cars, homes, and many industrial factories and can be seen in the, this slide right here as this factory is producing off a large emission of CO2. And uh, carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, consists of one carbon and two oxygen. And here's its lowest structure. The carbon has a double bond to each oxygen, oxygen atom, and each oxygen atom has two lone pairs. And the ocean absorbs about half the CO2 we have produced, which is a great thing because that like limits the amount that's in our atmosphere. Well, the Earth, as the Earth is warming up due to global warming, and that is causing there to be less CO2 picked up by the ocean. And the CO2 that is in the ocean is causing a lot of problems for the sea creatures and the coral reefs that are in it. And it's causing the ocean to be more acidic. And acidic means that the water is more like an acid and not like H2O or water as it was. And this is making it very, very dangerous. And in this picture right here, you can see as years have gone by, the amount of CO2 that has been in the ocean has gone up. It's only gone up and that is due to the amount of more fossil fuel being burned and our poor management on how to make our earth a better place and make it more safe. And when the ocean is becoming more safe, it's changing the chemistry of how it is. It's causing the life for many small creatures to be much more harsh and so not allowing them to grow to their full potential. And it's not allowing the uh, coral reefs to grow and become healthy. This next picture, you could see that there's a live one then a dead one. With the oceans becoming more acidic, the coral reefs are becoming weaker and weaker and they cannot grow. They are too weak. They grow up and towards the sunlight, but it's not allowing them because if they grow up, they're not as strong and bold as they used to be, so they'll snap or fall over. And that is why the ocean becoming more acidic is causing lots of problems for the coral reefs. And that is due to the amount of CO2 that is being caused and put into the ocean. So, yeah. So what exactly is happening to the corals and their chemical makeup due to these changes in our environment? Well, putting together both pieces of what Emma and Nick talked about, it really explains that process that is ultimately killing our reefs. 
So the issue of coral bleaching involves the loss of the zooxanthellae algae, which live in a symbiotic relationship with the coral. When the water temperatures rise, the coral becomes stressed, which then expel the algae that give coral about 90% of their energy. This, along with ocean acidification, leads to a reduction in calcium minerals available for skeleton building and repair. The backbone of coral reefs are composed of aragonite, which is one of the crystalline forms of calcium carbonate. Calcium and carbonate ions are excreted by the calicoblastic layer of corals, which make a calicoblastic fluid. That calicoblastic fluid maintains a high pH level, which is around 9.3 during the day and eight at night, depending on photosynthetic cycles. Calcium carbonate can't dissolve properly and precipitates as that extensive aragonite shell that makes up the coral backbone. Without the high pH levels, coral skeletons dissolve quickly and more carbonate ions turn into bicarbonate ions as the pH levels decrease. The increase in the H plus ion concentration leads to the decrease in pH as well as shifts the equilibrium towards the carbonate side. But at the lowered pH, calcium carbonate dissolves and therefore does not form aragonite, breaking apart the coral skeleton, which has led to a decline in coral calcification across the world. Coral reefs defend against storms, erosion, and provide jobs for communities. Over half a billion people depend on the reefs for food protection and income. This issue is not going to go away if we continue to ignore it, so I do encourage you to learn more about this topic and become more aware. Thank you for listening to our TED Talk.